everybody. I know it's been a few days since I posted a video, but you know, I've been trying to take some time off for myself to regroup. I got a couple of changes that I'm doing um, to my system at this time, so that's kept me pretty busy. But today I get to reveal my new music server. Before I go into that, you know the drill, subscribe, hit that like button, continue to support me. Anyway, let's talk about my new music server. You guys have known that over the past few years, I have been using primarily the Allrender music server. The W20, W20SC, I've also had the N20, I believe I even had the N10, can't remember. And for a period of time, over the last actually few months, I have been using my crappy MacBook Pro uh, USB out into my MSB reference DAC. But you know me, I got to continue to raise the bar, I have to continue to elevate. Of course, it was only a matter of time before I brought you guys my new music server. And that is the Teiko SGM Extreme music server. Guys, let me tell you that it is definitely one of the best additions that I have made over, over the last few months. Um, I know that many of you guys might be wondering, what is this? It's the, it's the first time I hear about this brand. This, well, this brand is from the Netherlands. This brand is built, it's custom built. It is very heavy. You can see some of the images right here. Um, you can see all the connections behind the unit, multiple LAN ports, multiple USB ports. Um, and of course, it's very well built. I mean, this is far bigger than any of the R renders that I have previously previously owned. As far as the, you know, the unit itself, let me talk about the website. Let me show you a little bit of the website and the configuration of the unit. Over here, you can see the website. You can see the different configurations. I'll let you guys see the screen right now so you can see all the different options that you can select when you custom order this music server. Different uh, storage sizes, different digital inputs. And so you can get to actually build it. You can actually build it the way you want it. And of course that brings the price up or down depending on what depending on the options that you choose, okay? Anyhow, this unit here, um, right now, as you can see, I have placed it on the optional stand that they sell you. Um, Teiko has a stand, as you can see on the, on the pictures right now, this is the optional stand that it is currently sitting on because I did not feel like buying a different brand name so I wanted to just continue to buy the matching stand made for this unit. As far as what you see on the back when it comes to ports, I was told by Teiko, by Emil actually himself over at Teiko, that the USB ports on the back have different sound qualities, different tonalities, if you will. Okay, uh, One is supposed to be a little warmer than the other. I don't remember which one is which, but I will be testing to see if this is indeed the case. I still do not understand how a USB port, one particular USB port, can be warmer than the other, but I plan to bring Emil and have a Zoom call so that he can go over the details of this music server. So be on the lookout for that future video. In addition to that, they, they actually had a remote session with me to configure the unit. As you can see right now, they are going through the motions of setting up my machine. Um, and uh, it was pretty cool to see how they're able to just install different uh, programs and uh, I believe Rune and all of that. I originally had Rune on my laptop that created some issues for me. I couldn't get the machine to work, so they were kind enough to do it all for me. Thank you very much, Emil, for the time that we spent here. I, I know you took about 
probably two hours of your time to do this for me due to the difficulties that we had here with my own system and my computer interfering with the connection and the settings. But anyhow, I am happy to report that it is working perfectly. Over here now, you are looking at the software that they have. They have their own software, in-house software. Um, and you can also select if you want to run if you want to run their own software, Takeo's own software, or if you want to run Rune as well, you, you can configure that yourself so that you can select which one, which software you like most. I have personally played with both. Um, I know that there has been a lot of conversation as to whether Rune sounds better or worse than Takeo's own software. And I cannot give you any feedback right now, guys, and maybe that's going to be a video for the future um, in which I will be coming in with my thoughts from inside the room as to whether I hear any difference in terms of the sound quality between Takeo's own software and Rune. I have preliminary feelings, but I think I need to be sure of what I'm about to say. <laughs> so let's leave that for a future video, okay? Guys, um, what I can tell you is this unit definitely, definitely impresses right out of the gate with nothing done to it. Once it's up and running, once it's working, it is really, really special. It's a special unit. My system completely transformed. If you guys have always wondered, what is a music server? And I get that question. I must say that in my consultation service, I get that all the time. Think of it as a computer. I'm going to say it in layman's terms. I'm going to explain it to you the easiest way possible. Think of it as a computer specifically built for your music. It's the easiest way to explain it. Okay. Instead of you having your music in a local computer or a laptop, which is not optimized for sound, you get to buy a music server from which you can stream your own music. So you can have your title, you can have your Spotify, your Cobus, whatever you choose. And you essentially drive the music server with a software, whether it be Rune or if it's a render, if you own an all render machine, you will use their own software. And you get to essentially drive your music selection through the music server. That music leaves the music server typically through USB. Some of you guys may want to use AES. That's fine. Some guys, some of you guys may want to use digital, other, other, another type of digital output. That's fine. But essentially, the sound goes from the music server, travels into the DAC, and then from the DAC, it gets converted from a digital input to an analog output, and it gets transformed and sent to your preamplifier or in, in, or to your amplifier if you are running no preamplifier that is that's the easiest way to explain it i hate when people make these conversations super complicated i think it just adds confusion it makes things look more important than what they are more complicated than what they are there's no need for that you guys know in my on my channel is not about making things too complicated i try to explain it the easiest way possible so that you guys understand now that said can you use a laptop to do the same job as a music server? Yes, you can. Yes, you can have a laptop go USB out of your laptop into your DAC. But let me just say this. It is not going to come close to the same quality that can be had when using, when using a dedicated music server. Now, some DACs out there have the ability to allow you to stream. Okay, so for instance, DCS. DCS has their own software. You can connect the unit directly into your ethernet. You don't really need a computer or a music server and you can stream that way. However, I'm gonna say it again. When I had my DCS, the Valdi and the Rossini in here, once I added the music server, guys, the transformation was quite significant, okay? So do not think that because you can stream with your DAC without the need of a music server that you're going to get the same sound quality as having your dedicated as having a dedicated music server. If that is not the case, that is it's completely false. Do not believe for one second the sound quality is the same. 
what a music server does essentially besides passing the music from your streaming service of choice or the local music that you may have in your network, okay? Think of it as it cleanses the music. Think of it as it fixes whatever dirt, whatever jitter, whatever is inside the music. That So your DAC is essentially receiving a, a much cleaner signal from the music server than it would from a laptop, from a personal computer, or from just your straight ethernet connection from your router. So remember that, okay? It, there is definitely a benefit to be had when you have a music server and you're streaming and you're playing a lot of digital files. I highly encourage you all to buy a music server. Now, I'm not saying go out there and buy a Takeo Extreme because as you saw, it is quite pricey, okay? And that is the case for some of the ultra high-end music servers out there. They're not gonna be cheap. Of course, there's always questions from different people as to how can something be that kind of money if all it is is a dedicated computer. Um, it, it seems a little too astronomical. I am personally not going to get into that, okay? I want to just report my findings when it comes to the sound reproduction and what I'm hearing. Nothing. The Takeo Extreme also likes to have a good power cord connected to it. Like any other component, power cords, upgraded power cords are a must for this unit, okay? Uh, when you have a standard power cord, things sound a little thin. The sound can be a little bright because the machine is transparent enough to let you hear the power cord itself. So when you buy something like this, please remember that you also have to factor in the optional power cord. Um, right now, I have not received the power cord that I wanna use with it, so I am using an AudioQuest Dragon Source, which I don't know if it's the right power cord yet. I'm going to be trying a couple of other power cords with the machine to see what kind of results I get. Okay, anyhow, guys, one of the biggest changes, sonically speaking, that I have heard is a lot more resolution, guys. There is a lot more nuance with this unit. There is so much more information, so much more better imaging and separation. I mean, there is certainly um, so much happening. I can't even explain it. Now, in the beginning hours of my time with it, I will say this, it was very bright. It was not pretty to listen to. Uh, it needs break-in. I'm telling you, it needs a lot of break-in time. Um, so, I'm also being told that it responds quite well to different stands. So, maybe I get to do that. Maybe I get to play with a different stand and see what kind of sound I get out of it. Pretty excited, to be honest with you, to play with something like this. A music server that is so receptive of the changes that you make to it. Power cords, any kind of cable, you can hear it through the music server and I really, really like that. Going forward guys, all the future videos that I'm gonna be posting, remember the music server is the Teiko Extreme and I plan once again to bring Emil from Teiko and basically interview him and ask him a little more about the machine itself about what he has cooking under the hood. He can be the better person to explain to you all than I am. I'm just an end user like a lot of you guys. So be prepared for that video, okay? That's all I have for now. Thank you guys for your time, for your support, for your love. Please stay safe. Please continue to follow me, continue to subscribe. I got a lot more to show you. I got a couple of new things too that I can talk about but I think you guys are gonna like what I have here in my room. Take care, and that's all I got for tonight. Bye.